Hey everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are making roast beef. Now you guys, I already have a roast beef recipe that I've done, but I did it in my Instant Pot. And everybody doesn't have an Instant Pot, and I want to share how I fix my roast beef in the oven, and then that way anybody that has an oven, in which everybody does, if you have a house, you have an oven, you can make you some roast beef too. This is also the way my mom used to do her roast beef, and um, there are a couple of things that she didn't use that I'm going to use, but for the most part, this is what she did when she made her roast beef. So I'm starting off with about six pounds of roast beef that's already been rinsed and it's here. I will be using some beefy onion soup mix. <clears throat> now I'm going to use two packs of these, of this beefy onion, and then I'm going to use one pack of the onion. Okay. I'll also use, now my mom just used garlic powder, onion powder, and she used a little bit of crushed red pepper. She did use the beefy onion. Um, but, and she would use cream of celery sometimes. Cream of celery soup. But in addition to that, I'm going to use some cream of mushroom and I'm also going to use some tomato soup. Okay? Now with the Lipton onion soup mix, you always add water. So, you usually add one cup of water per pack, but I'm adding a little extra water because, of course, we love gravy. I'm fixing this for my, for my dude number one. It's his birthday today. And he loves a lot of gravy so he can use it in his rice. Gravy, sauces, anytime I fix stuff like that, I have to do extra. So I'm going to start off with five cups of water. And what my subscribers asked me a question. When I fixed the cube steak and I was making that gravy and I did it with water, they asked why didn't I do beef broth. The reason I didn't was because I really didn't think about it because I was making it the way my mom made it. But today, and she used water. She never used the beef broth. She always used water. But today, I'm going to use, add to this water, I'm going to make it a beef broth. And I love to use my Better Than Bouillon. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to add to my water to make it a beef broth to start my um, roast beef. And also, I'm going to use oven bags, and I'm going to use this turkey size. My mom always fixed her roast beef in an oven bag in the oven. Always. And plus, it makes for easy cleanup. So once you get done, you can pull that bag up, all that gravy. You know, if you're done with it, just put it in the trash. So that's always, always great to have easy cleanup. Now, this box comes with, normally comes with, and I already had, had a bag that I took out. This box, when you take the bag out, it normally comes with some little closures. And I don't know where they are. A little closure where you can keep the bag closed. And they're brown. I don't know what has happened to them. So, I'm afraid to use, you see these look like the little bread ties. I'm afraid to use that because it has that metal piece in there. And I don't want it to melt the plastic bag. So what I'm going to do, y'all, you have to improvise in the kitchen. I'm going to cut, this bag is so big, I'm going to cut just a little bit of this edge off and I'm going to use it as to tie this bag up, okay? Again, I have to improvise because I need to keep this bag closed and I don't have that little tie. So I'm going to simply just cut the bag a little bit off the end and then... I'm going to take this and I can use this to tie my bag up, okay? Y'all, that's how you improvise. Alright, so I'll come back to this. 
Now with the, uh, when you use the oven bags, they always tell you to put a tablespoon of flour in there. So that's why this flour is sitting out, okay? And I almost forgot the vegetables. I also have already cut up some celery. I have some carrots here. And I have onions that I'm going to add. And right here I have some russet potatoes. And I have these, uh, I've already peeled them and they're sitting in cold water so that they wouldn't start turning. I almost forgot about the vegetables. Now I'm going to start by putting about three tablespoons of all-purpose flour in my oven bag. And that's also going to help, um, help my gravy thicken up just a little bit. Instruction says to put one, but I always add a little extra. And then I shake up the bag and try to get the bag coated in the flour. Okay? Next, I'm just going to take my beautiful chuck roast. Get, it, get them placed in the bag. Of course, I have already thoroughly washed my hands. Don't be in the kitchen with nasty hands, y'all. That's just nasty. Some beautiful chuck roast. down in my oven bag, okay? And now that my chuck roast is in the oven bag, I'm just gonna season it. And you guys, there's, you know, don't make this difficult. You don't have to have exact measurements when you're fixing this roast beef like you would if you were baking a cake or something. So there's really no way you can mess this up, okay? I'm starting off with my garlic powder and I'm not even gonna turn the roast over. But I'm using that very generously. And I'm just going to season one side because the gravy is going to be seasoned. And, you know, it's going to take care of seasoning the entire roast. My onion powder. Again, very generously. Just sprinkle some in there. I'm not adding any salt because that Lipton onion soup mix is going to be enough salt. I'm going to add a few flakes of this crushed red pepper. Not quite as generous with that. We don't do spicy. And then I'm going to take my vegetables, the onions, carrots, and celery. We're just going to put it in there, okay? Not hard at all. Here are my potatoes. Just going to add those in. You guys, again, do not make this hard. Okay. And this is what we're looking like now that everything is in here. I just literally just dumped it all in there. Okay. So now I have my water here and I'm going to get everything all mixed up and then I'm just going to pour that over the roast. We're going to start getting our broth together and I'm going to use just a little bit of my Better Than Bouillon. Just add that to the water. Just like that. I have some beef broth. I'm adding my 
two packs of Lipton Beefy Onion. And then the one pack of just the onion soup mix. Stir that a little bit. I have already thoroughly cleaned off the top of my cans. Make sure when you guys are using canned goods, you thoroughly wash off and clean the tops of your cans. But I've already done that. Gonna get in this cream of celery. Mushroom. You guys, all of this is going to make a wonderful gravy with this um, roast beef. Then my tomato soup. Simply pour it over the roast beef. Yep, I won't. Err bit of that. <laughs> I won't err bit of that out of there. Move it around. And it's watery now, but with the flour that's in there, all of those soups. It's gonna thicken up. Let me add a little bit of black pepper. Right now my oven has been preheated to 350 degrees and I'm going to cook it on 350 for at least two hours and then I'll turn it down to about 325 and just let it continue to slow roast and cook real slow because again we won't be eating until tonight till about 8 o'clock and right now it's about 2.15. Okay, now what I want to do is... I'm going to take the top of the bag and I'm going to twist it 
a little bit. And this is where I would ordinarily put that little tie that comes with the um, bag. But since I can't find it, my little tie that I cut off, I'm just going to tie it around. Wait a minute, let me double this because I need to make sure I can... Um, when I check my roast, I need to be able to get it off real easy. Okay, so I'm just going to twist it around a little bit. One thing about that little brown twisty tie, it would have been much easier to see it because it was a different color than the bag, but that's okay. This is going to work. Okay. Tight, like in a little bowl because what I'm going to do is I'll check it later to see if it's as tender as I want it to be. And I'm trying to get it to where it all stays inside of this pan and doesn't hang over like that. That's what you don't want. Okay. Now what you have to do is add a couple little slits in it because the steam needs to escape. Okay. So I usually add about three. I'm not going to cut them really big. I'm just going to cut. That's one. Two. And you don't cut it way down here because your gravy will end up coming out. So that's why you make sure you put your little slits close to the top of where you, where you tied it. Okay. So that's just enough to where that steam will escape. Okay. So now we're getting ready to get this bad boy in the oven. timer for two hours and uh, again it's on 350 degrees so in two hours it'll be like 415 430 and then I'll turn it down okay we don't do tough roast beef we love it tender melt in your mouth won't have to worry about it drying out because we have so much liquid which is going to make that gravy so it is going to be absolutely tender and wonderful so we'll um like i said i'll turn it down and even turning it down at 4 15 4 30 i'm going to turn it down and let it continue to slow cook until about eight o'clock tonight okay so i see y'all Late on tonight. <clears throat> All right. It's about six hours later. Six hours. Let's see what we look like here. Ooh, that steam is coming out. Them little slits I cut. <laughs> Let me let you guys see. Look how tender that is. Ugh. Oh. That's what you call fork tender. Just just falling apart. Look at that. And then this is the gravy. See how it thickened up? That's going to be good over some rice. Do some for what? You want to taste some? Yeah, I want to taste I'll tell you one thing. I can promise you this. Why are you trying to get 
Coach, all I know I'm, what you get ready to say. I'm, I, all I was going to be is, uh, all I'm going to do is taste a little bit, but I can promise I can give you my word on this. You ain't going to do what? I ain't going to burn myself. I don't care how many. Ooh. You funny. All I want is a little, that's enough. That's hot. Oh, yeah, that's hot. This thing's steaming. I can promise you, I ain't burning myself. You need me to blow it for you? No, I don't need you to blow it for me. I'm going to blow it for me. I'm going to blow it for me. No. You no. Blow, you won't, you I, won't I, I trust me. Oh, what? I gave you some last time and I blowed it and it wasn't hot. Which means you okay. trust me. I trust me this time. I trust me. <laughs> what is you? I you it, I okay, go plate. ahead. Go ahead. No. It's supposed to be my my little plate I got. I just got it. Okay, I was on my tender deal. I'm, I'm tender it is. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you making right show, ain't you? Okay, let the plate go. It's mine. I know it, but I'm getting ready to show them something. Go ahead and put that in your mouth. It's, it's not. <laughs> no, no. It's, okay. Hurry up before you drop it, honey. I ain't going to drop it. I'm going okay. to beat my Lord, Lord have mercy. I'm just trying to show You blowing all on my arm. What? Ow. Y'all, that's so tender. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. Open your mouth. Wait a minute. You need to blow it first so you won't burn your mouth. You still blowing it? <laughs> yeah, it's not cool. Baby, you're going to fix you something. Okay. It's cold. It's cold. Baby, you want to take some? Bit. And then we have these wonderful potatoes in here and carrots. Wow, this is just good. It just falls apart. So I started it at 215. I cooked it a couple of hours on 350 degrees. And then, after two hours of cooking, so it's about 5.15, 5.30, I turned it down to 300, 325-ish. It's so about 325. And then I let it continue to cook until about 8.15. So, probably could have cooked it about 300 too, but in all it cooked like six hours. What? Are you still blowing? Have you eaten it yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, about six hours. And you see, it's not dry because I have so much gravy in it that it's not going to dry out. You need out. a lot of gravy because I it goes with your rice. Just wanted to be tender, and I know. That's why I said I fixed a lot of gravy because he eats it with his rice. So, let's get, his, get the birthday boy's plate fixed. Yeah, the birthday guy. The birthday guy. The birthday guy. The dog on birthday boy. The birthday boy. <laughs> You are a birthday boy. Listen, <laughs> matter of fact, let us straighten some stuff we'll out. We'll talk right. about that later. Well, you are right. Oh, have mercy. The birthday, the birthday man. Let's get your plate fixed. The birthday up. man. Well, I guess you guys can see everybody in the kitchen now. So. I ain't going to try to be stingy. I'm going to post this share. You always try to be stingy with your cake. I share. He's still fixing his plate. Think about me. But as soon as y'all finish fixing y'all. Thank you guys so much for watching. We already look forward to you joining us again next time. Hit the nosy. Happy birthday, babe. Hey, happy birthday. Bye. 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 Bye.